Mike is live. Can you hear me? We are live on all platforms. Hopefully Twitch very soon. It says sending data. It is 9.01 a.m. U.S. Pacific Standard Time here in Los Angeles. It's Wednesday, February 9th, 2022 AD. Have a fun show for you. I'm finally going to cover a little bit more of the Canada protest. And I will be getting to your calls as well, guys. Up in Canada, some ridiculous stuff going on. Yesterday we talked about the uh, police and Asmodor in defending his opposition by and large to the... Uh, no knock warrants because there's this phony there's this phony melodrama because a black got himself killed because he was sleeping on his buddy's couch he pulled a gun when the cops busted in don't know what what it's about don't know if he's if it was a bad shoot or what some say that the no knock raids are a bad idea but the police the police up in Canada are arresting 78 year old great grandfathers Beating them up (laughs) because they outlawed honking up in Ottawa because some Asian lady who lives up there, she filed like a class action lawsuit saying, oh, the the honking is too much. Ah, it stinks. Well, the communist shutdown stink too. I don't know. What a mess, right? What a terrible mess. All that and again, your calls, guys. But let's get right on with the show! One, two, three, four. Oh, it's the Hank Report. The Hank Report. La, la, la. Oh, it's the Hank Report. The Hank Report. La, la, la. Hey, guys! Oh, it's the Hank Report. The Hank Report. So, how are you guys doing? I am fine. Shout out to the Facebook crew, the faithful few. (laughs) Somebody asked, I saw somebody on my Facebook page. Was it Wayne? I don't know if it was Wayne, but what's up, Wayne? Somebody's all, oh, it's been a while since I've tuned in. Is is this boy still talking for 94% of the Hake Report, or is he opening up for phone calls as well? <laughs> yeah, always open for phone calls. F- practically always. So, uh, by the way, it is Wednesday. Hope you enjoyed the Jesse Lee Peterson show. If you tuned in, I do recommend it. I had an excellent manhood hour talking to a woman, but it's also instructive for the men as well. Right? Very cool. <laughs> Everybody complains about that it's mess. Well, I don't, I don't know if anybody complained this today, but also Wednesday, you know, I put, I help put out for Bond, my other job. I'm also a producer. I'm also the Hake Report host, but for my other job as Bond (laughs) producer, meaning I put out audio online content. Nick says he got two emails. (laughs) I put out online, people have no patience. I put out online content. Archive content for the church with Jesse Lee Peterson throwback stuff archive Sunday service gonna be a good one Uh, Why do you make bad decisions? Cool, that's gonna be 4 p.m. Pacific time today Um, and Also, I do have debates some of you guys have been asking about my my debates and Appearances on outside platforms. It's been a several days since I've had one or more but uh, I have one this weekend, but I don't think it will be live. Matt Chats, the great channel, Matt Chats, I believe, will be interviewing me Sunday afternoon, evening. And uh, I'll let you know when that's out. I'll put it up on thehakereport.com slash appearances. And I will try to share it on YouTube for you lazy people who don't even like to go outside of the YouTube platform. Shame on you. I can relate. <laughs> Lines are filling up, guys. There is one line open, 888-775-3773. But first, I have to show you this Freedom Convoy situation. 
I gathered a few cl- pictures, you know, the Daily Mail. Far, are they far left? Maybe they're not exactly far left. They're pretty sleazy, though. People call them right wing. I don't consider them right wing. I know that Fox News is loosely affiliated with them or something, supposedly. But Drudge reports that Freedom Convoy protests are disrupting another U.S.-Canada border crossing as more arrests are made. They've been arresting people, and I have video of one such arrest. Uh, Yeah, I'm looking at Drudge again, a little bit. A 78-year-old man bloodied and bruised, allegedly. I didn't notice the blood and the bruising because the video quality is pretty low. He was arrested for honking his horn. And I'm like, this has to be one of those, one of those exaggerations. Like, nah, he wasn't arrested for honking his horn. He was arrested for acting, he must have been arrested for acting erratic and escalating the situation after being pulled over for honking his horn. And I'm like, for honking his horn? I hadn't even heard of this. But yeah, I'd heard a little bit from you guys. About this stuff. Hate doesn't know his news. Yeah. True. Well, Daily Mail reports, you know, because the reason I was incredulous about it is because, you know, Sandra Bland was arrested for not blinking her light, right? For not using her blinker. Or Philando Castile. They do this to the blacks all, with the blacks all the time. Philando Castile was shot for expired tags or, uh, Walter Scott was shot in the back by a cop for expired tags. Whatever, right? Philando Castile, I think he matched the description of, uh, a p- couple of people who were suspected in a, a robbery. But anyway, that's not the real sit- that's not the real description of what went down with the, uh, with the thing, with the, uh, blacks. Or, Eric Garner was killed in the chokehold for selling Lucy cigarettes. No, he was, he lost his life because he was resisting arrest and he was deathly obese and had health problems. Hake loves that police state. (laughs) Uh, Until it happens to me. And Philando Castile was acting funny and he pulled a gun and he was moving a gun and the cop was jumpy, I don't know. And it was a Filipino cop, by the way. They were trying to say it was white. And uh, Sandra Bland was acting crazy. Well, anyway, here's this story. Moment an elderly man, purportedly a white man, great-grandfather, 78 years old, cuffed and arrested by two Canadian cops for honking his horn or something. Here's video of the arrest. It's about five minutes long, so bear with me through it. I think Daily Mail did an okay job at bleeping it. Hopefully you can hear and understand. I tried raising the levels of the part that gets kind of quiet because some guy s- recorded it with his cell phone video and he ca- kept on calling it effing communism, blanking communism. So a bystander who was an activist against this uh, communist, onerous police state stuff. Two Ottawa officers arresting Gary Charlebois. Charlebois. It looks like Charles, but without the S at the end. Instead of the S, it says boys. And, you know, it's French Canada is probably somewhere up there in Canada, right? French Canada is somewhere in Canada, right? So maybe it's Charlebois. Charlebois. For allegedly honking his horn just this past Sunday. You guys may be more familiar with this than me. But anyway, is the clip there? Clip 11? Watch this clip, and I'll try to... I'll try to describe what's going on a little bit for the audio podcast listeners, and then I will get to your calls and stuff. Listen to this and watch. You don't have to answer his question, sir. You don't have to answer his question, sir. He does have to. No, he doesn't. Your comments fill me no, from the sidewalk. He side does walk. have to. Fuck off. Your comments fill me from the sidewalk. <laughs> no. God, you're doing what he you, Yes, I know. You you're abusing old one. men. You swung at me. That Drive you're not a Canadian. If I swung at you, it's on film, so you're fine. Drive because I tooted the horn. Yeah. Come ahead. Yeah, it's called communism. That is why you're pulled it's over. called communism. Right. It's communism. You don't have to show anything. Relatively quiet wrong. neighborhood. I know I have. You have the right 
of freedom of choice. Of you have the right to beep your horn or whatever. Why are you doing this? Because it's an offense. Right. Of it's what? An offense to beep your horn. No, it is not an offense. It's <laughs> Tell me it's not. I have it written down that it is. It's actually. An so offense, you're you're right? standing with your lying government. You're lying, He's cop. He's Do you know that your superior is a liar and he went on the media lying to the Canadian people? Now you're two in this. Have me fired. Have me What's fired. your bat name and badge number? Three one nine two Jones. Jones. Sure. You have Three one nine two Jones. Yeah. Look at what they're doing to an old man. Okay. That's a, a citizen yeah, of Canada. Student the horn, you pissed off. That's right. That's exactly so is everybody who lives here. I can be a Doesn't really matter. This is, this is the capital of Canada. Drop you your mandates. Trouble. Stand down. I don't, I don't have You're not doing your job. You're mandate. representing oh, hate. Right. You're a terrorist. Oh, thanks, You're a terrorist. I don't know why the fuck you're You're representing know. hate. No. So you're representing you hate. Call your lawyer. You'd be really in Call your lawyer. I don't care. Give me your driver's license or insurance registration. You have to talk up to the Maybe you are on your side, but I mean, the focus. Because I killed the one that's outside because he stopped flying. That's right. He's a he's a supporter for Canadian freedom. He is, who cares? They shouldn't live in the capital of Canada. Then they better leave. Because until the mandates are ended, this is not going to stop. Stop harassing old men. You don't have to show them anything. It's against the law. You just. Whoa, he starts to walk away. <laughs> what are you doing? Now he's got his arm twisted behind his back. That's assault. Brought him down to his knee. Short old man. Failed to ID. Yeah, he failed to ID. Hey, hey, get back. Get back. We're back. We're filming. We're doing our part. Get back. It's all on Four foot ten, old man. Don't say anything. You you don't hey, Rich, Oops. Rich, stand down. Stand down. Stand down. Rich, no, it's peaceful. They barely bleed. Oh, he said that word, I think. The G word. This is going right to the media. YouTube. What's your name and badge number? What's your name and badge, badge number? What's your name and badge number? It's a quiet part of town. They, he honked once, what? What's your name and badge number? Look, they're hurting an old man, a Canadian citizen. It's communism. This is communism. He's scared. Communist. You stand with the communist fucking government. Call your police chief. He'll back you up. Call the police. Call your police chief. Arrested an old man. Shame on you. Shame on you. Shame on you. Yeah, I know he beat the horn. What the fuck do they represent? They represent Trudeau and and the police. Ah, uh, Trudeau's evil. Slowly, that's what they represent. Hate, division. You are not protecting and serving nobody. Communism right here. Lest we forget, fight for your rights. This is bullshit. Communist fucking police. You need to attack this old man. What's your name and badge number, sir? What's your name and badge number, sir? You have nothing to do with this? What's your, yes, I do. I'm a Canadian citizen. What is your name and badge number? Tough guys with your fucking guns. <laughs> he shows it's all blurry. You can't see anything. You do that to the Canadian citizens of Canada. What did we do? Get back. Get back. Get back. Get back. Get back. Get back. It's back. snowy Canada up there. Get back. Get back. This is a free country. Get back. This is a free country. What are we doing? Get back. What am I doing? Get back. You're causing a disturbance by yelling. You caused a disturbance. You just arrested an old man. Go. You're causing a disturbance by yelling. You just arrested an old man. The peace. You want to get arrested? Get out. Get out. Get out. Okay, then get them out. I'm, I'm get them, out. them out. Thank you. Get the boat. Come on. We're not going to make a... What a mess, huh? We're calling for backup. Another cop showing up. Terrible, huh? So the background is they're saying that the arrest and honk ban comes as Ottawa deals with days of ongoing protests against the vaccine mandates. This is not even a busy part of the city. 
They could have just said, hey, don't honk. You don't honk right now. But I guess they, there was somebody who sued for this. It's ridiculous. Let me re- let me show you this picture. There's this Asian female named Zexi, Z-E-X-I, Lee, 21-year-old female. She's sued, <laughs> and she's aggrieved. She's aggrieved, a member of, or downtown resident of, of uh, Ottawa, the capital of Canada. She got an injunction from this judge who banned honking in Ottawa. Honking. Because they're filling up ho- ho- Ottawa. Uh, the injunction was in response to a lawsuit by downtown resident Zexy Lee. Her, and I have a picture of her in this folder from, uh, from all the, there's a lot of, uh, photographs of these, of this protest. Look at this woman. 21 year old, typical Canadian nowadays. Asian. Not white, because Canada's been overrun, right? And she... Sued her lawyer, Paul Champ, said the level of noise measured in her apartment was akin to having a lawnmower running in her living room 24 hours a day, seven days a week, according to Ottawa Citizen. $9.8 million class action lawsuit opened to up to 6,000 downtown residents who live in or near the protest's red zone. Ottawa Superior Court Justice Hugh McLean granted a 10-day injunction the next day banning horn honking and air horn blowing on Monday. The only purpose of this horn blowing is to bring attention to this protest, McLean said. Yeah, duh. There's no need for that anymore. The public is fully aware of what's going on, he said. I wonder if he banned Black Lives Matter or Antifa from putting out Black Lives Matter mess. The injunction was in response to a lawsuit by downtown resident Zexy Lee. Blah, blah, blah. I told you that. As the officer waits for Chilabois to show his ID on, on Sunday, that's this, going back to this uh, video, Chilabois, Charlebois, Charlebois turns around to walk away. Because he's all, I don't have to show my ID. So he starts to walk, walk away. So he grabs him by the arm, twists his arm behind him, brings him down to his knee, picks him back up, throws him against the van, and the two officers cuff him. And then march him over to their vehicle. You failed to ID. What a mess. So he was given a $118 ticket for unnecessary noise, according to the Toronto Sun. Sustained injuries to his arm, hands, shoulders, knees. And I think a judge told him, banned him from protesting or from honking for like 10 days or something like that. Show the more, show, show those pictures of him, the screenshots just of him like getting marched away. Look at this man. He's four foot ten, according to the Daily Mail. And he's like, forget you guys. <laughs> 70, 78 year old man with plaid pants. Four foot ten, and then he's getting manhandled by these young whippersnapper cops who are enforcing this uh, injunction that a judge passed. You, you can't honk your horn in Ottawa. How much was he really honking, I wonder? Talk about... Very reasonable, right? Very reasonable. Look at this Freedom Convoy thing. I have some pictures of it. No lockdowns, no mandates, no vax pass. Freedom, stand up. Forget Trudeau, one of the trucks says with his flag. Forget, they're saying, they're putting F Trudeau, F word, but instead of the U in the F word, they put a Canadian maple leaf flag. Trudeau's evil, by the way. He's the male feminist Canadian prime minister. He said last week, I think, he won't be meeting with the truckers and the protesters. Uh, over protesting the vax mandate and the sh- communist shutdowns. At the House of Commons on Monday, he called protesters, quote, a few people shouting and waving swastikas. Yeah, okay. I've seen a lot of swastikas. And so what if they were? But they're not. A Daily Mail reporter at the scene has seen no evidence of anyone waving a swastika flag. Swastika flag. (laughs) Swastikas! Remember that black, phony politician I played last week? Pretending, oh, the Confederate flag is about slavery. I would like to see these protesters condemning that. Slavery's hurt black bodies. 
On Tuesday, the prime minister appeared to shift tone, though, saying he understood how frustrated everyone is, and the time is coming when we will be able to relax. Ridiculous. And so, there, you know, the, the midterms here in America are coming up, and interesting timing, right? Interesting timing. They're loosening up. Oh, thank you, dear oppressors. Thank you for letting us have the, the uh, illusion of our freedoms back. Thank you. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Let me kiss your hand and feet, right? What does this say? I think that there are, they are loosening up restrictions, but that's only be, it's not that they want to loosen up, it's just that they are, uh, people are sick of it. Forget Trudeau! 40 minutes till the awful music starts, says Colin B. <laughs> oh, yeah, for the music, can you, sh- can you have, like, me in the lower right screen? Because it's going to be, like, a nine minute long song, guys. So can you, ha- like, have the, me in the lower right? Cool. So that way I can chat with you guys. Uh, the commie fears the swastika, says Nordhausen. The commie, some people say that the commies are the swastikas. Uh, some say that that's what the purpose of bringing out this, the swastika sign was. Was they're accusing the, the Canadian government of being oppressors. Because that's what the swastika represents to a lot of normal people. And the communist symbol is well embraced by people anyway. Ridiculous, huh? I did hear Canadian provinces, Alberta, Quebec, Saskatchewan, whatever, he pronounced it better. Um, I'm pointing to Kickflip Chris in the super chats on, on, uh, on the Jesse Lee Peterson show. Saskatchewan? Whatever. I uh, have signaled plans to ease scamdemic restrictions. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau criticized Nazi symbolism and racist imagery being used by some protesters. Shut up, Trudeau. You should be recalled again. Nordhausen says Nazis fighting communists. I know that's what a lot of the, a lot of you guys say. Um, I heard that even America, there were some Americans who wanted to continue and fight against the communists. But now it's like a spiritual battle. They're uh, conquering... The f- so w- formerly free white countries without firing a shot. Well, they are firing some shots, but they're brainwashing the people and intimidating. So evil. He appeared to shift tone on Tuesday, so- saying how frustrated everyone is. Because <laughs> he doesn't realize. And, you know, there are protests over in, down under, over in Australia where they, it's ridiculous. And in uh, New Zealand... Protests in the capitals, cities of those countries. There's an ambassador. Oh, Ambassador Bridge links Ontario with Detroit, Michigan. Blocked to traffic for a third day in a row. Crazy, huh? People still, uh, Broski Bear, I think, was saying... James loves the police state. They, uh, he's for the, he's for no-knock warrants. I think there's a pl- a time and place for him. <laughs> anyway, let me, uh, and you can call in, guys, 888-775-3773. I just wanted to show that to you. Um, people are like, he shouldn't have resisted arrest. <laughs> uh, I could picture people saying that. Blacks. The blacks who hate whites. Anyway, let me get to Denny in Bulgaria. Denny, what's up, man? How are you? Good evening, Mr. Hicks. How are you doing? Doing well. Good uh, morning from here. Yeah. Evening to you. Nice. Yeah. Good morning. I saw you yesterday on YouTube. You had a remarkable discussion, a remarkable debate with uh, someone. I, I'm really bad with names. It was, I think, a month old video. About communism versus socialism. Oh yeah, with ha- uh, possibly with Haas of uh, infrared on modern day uh, debate. Not, on modern day debate, yes. Yeah, on, yeah, modern day. It was remarkable, and I, as a person from both socialistic uh, era of a country, I wanted to tell you that there are two people, two types of people who actually want this kind of a regime. 
those who never experienced it and that little fracture of people that actually benefit from it. Normal people don't want that kind of stuff around them. Yeah. This this regime did nothing good and it was tested a few times all around the world and it failed everywhere. And it's it's a, there's like a saying basically in the whole uh, Eastern Bloc of Europe that communism is like cancer. And even if you cure it, there are still a lot of damage done afterwards. And people should be very careful with that kind of stuff. It's not helpful. And you mentioned something that really resonated with me. It, it's type of a regime that's up against God. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if you're aware how right you are, because it, it really attacks all kind of religions, and the main focus is not on that, and it always leads to destruction. And it didn't work in Germany, it didn't work in Russia, and it, it isn't working in Cuba. I'm not even going to talk about North Korea. This is something very, very dangerous, and it, people are playing with fire when they are telling it how telling how good it is. Yeah, and it I, is a. I wanted. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. I wanted to congratulate you on how well you handled it. You were remarkable, and you were very calm. You explained it very clear. It was truly great to see you. Well, I appreciate it, man. Uh, yeah, the communism is like a female version of morality in which the only, the only evil is slavery, but it, communism is a form of slavery. Because everybody's a slave mm -hmm. to something. You're either slaves of yes. Christ or slaves of Satan. And communism is anti-God, anti-man, anti-Christian. So you're, you're slaves of Satan necessarily in communism. Or at least that's what they want you to be. And you can have your secret life. And some people come out better from that oppression and tougher. Tough times build strong men, right? But it's not a... No, it's, it's the wrong I idea. It's uh, it's terrible just that the fact that you provide the state with the opportunity to tell you how long can your uh, your hair can be, what kind of clothes you can wear, when to get up in the morning, when to get get to bed. Because I know it sounds crazy, yeah. But this is indeed what happens. It's not a joke. And there was a, there was a joke at first. It's one of those jokes that were born out of misery and pain. At, at the beginning, the idea of communism was all of the people are going together towards paradise. And after a couple of months, only a handful of people will be going <laughs> towards paradise. Because they'll, the the kill, uh, they'll kill the people who don't go along with them? <laughs> yes, and after a few more months, everybody goes to paradise the way they know. Or they just and starve. It's a ridiculous thing, and I wanted really to congratulate on the way you handled it. It was remarkable, and I wanted to thank you for your show and for the work you're doing. Well, thank you, man. It's good to hear from you, Denny. appreciate it. Good to hear from you, Mr. Hakes. Have a remarkable day. Thank you. You as well. Take care. Good. All right. Oops, I hung up on him. But you can check out uh, the YouTube channel Modern Day Debate. They've hosted me almost... Several times, I guess, might be accurate to say. Twice on uh, Sunday, the 16th of January, at the uh, Dallas situ Dallas uh, event. Dallas, Texas, we did in-person debates. And then again, um, before that, versus this guy, who Mouthy Infidel, <laughs> who was like a leftist. It might have been him who, I was, who we were talking about. Social he was more like socialism. Versus capitalism, I think. And then, and some of you guys are kind of anti-capitalist. Because it's been exploited and subverted and turned into immoral stuff. Commie capitalism, I call it. And then again with, uh, versus infrared. And before that, I debated Black Lives Matter and the phony racism idea against, uh, Brenton Lengel. Brenton Lengel. And you can find all of those by going to thehakereport.com slash appearances. Um, let me get to, uh, Tony in California. Tony, what's up? 
Tony, are you there? Tony, come off a of mute. Well, let me get to Chris in Texas. Chris, thanks for holding, man. What's up? Hey. Hey. Hey, thanks for um, letting me on. Um, yeah, I've called before. It was like two years ago. Um, but, man, I, I didn't know you were doing in-person debates. That's crazy. I, you were yeah. In Texas. I, I wish I would have gone see you. Oh, you're, oh, yeah. You're, are you anywhere near the Dallas area? Yeah, I'm not far away. We're cool. We're hours away. Yeah, that was cool. Um, it was fun. Shout out to Modern Day Debate for making that happen. But, yeah, I wanted to talk about um, the no-knock raid. Because okay. Because I think we need to have a federal law that bans them. They should not be in our country at all. You think the feds should be involved in that? I think that's the only way to make it happen because the states are not going to do anything about it. Why won't the states do anything about it? Uh, I mean, they haven't now. They haven't up to this point. You know, my drawback about this whole attack on no-knock raids is I see a lot of decent people like you, sensible people like you, opposing them, but the worst people are coming out against them, too. And I don't trust anything that those guys do. This Jacob Frey guy, who is the mayor of Minneapolis, Minnesota, wants to ban the no-knock raids at a time when crime is out of control in the city of Minneapolis. And there may be times to do no-knock raids, and he's banning them outright. He's putting a moratorium on them. And the feds, the feds, generally anything that the feds do is not right. I get that the thing about the Constitution, you know, the unlawful search and seizure is part of, like, the Fourth Amendment, I want to say, and you, you're not supposed to have to put up with police and soldiers just coming in your home unannounced and stuff like that. And these judges, right. the corrupt courts, are very corrupt, and a lot more and more cops are becoming like the world, and the world is becoming very corrupt. So I get the the hesitance to want to allow this stuff, but the feds have not been pushing anything good with regard to the, with regard to containing the police. They've allowed the police to do, to clamp down on the whites and the Christians and the freedom loving people, the unmasked, the unvaxxed, but they've also allowed the, the non clamp down just sat by and let people go wild with the Black Lives Matter Antifa and uh, illegal immigration situation. They stopped the police from doing anything to stop the, uh, the illegals. You saw that in, you know, so it's a, what, what a mess. So I don't trust Here's the feds thing. to do anything right. Here's my thing, though. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay, so this, this guy who, who was killed, Amir Locke, is that his name? Yeah, Amir Locke, 22-year-old black. Yeah. He was sleeping in his friend's apartment, I guess, on his couch, and he had the blanket over him, right. the TV on, and he had his gun that he supposedly lawfully owned. And the right. cops saw the gun. I don't know. I haven't watched the video at all, right? And so yeah, the I cops saw, shot him. The cops shot him, and he died later in the hospital. Yeah, I saw it. It was it was very fast. And yeah. I understand. Um, I, I want to be a police officer, so I understand what they go through. Yeah. That uh, once they see a gun and somebody's not complying, they have to make a very fast decision. Right. But my only problem was when you see the video, they came in so quick, like they, they like picked the lock or something, or they had a key. And they came in quietly, and they're in, and then they just start screaming, like, oh, you know, search one, search right. one, show me your hand. Like, yep. look, if I have my gun next to me, and anybody just broke into my house in the middle of the night, and they start screaming, I'm probably going to reach for my gun, too. Yeah. You don't know what you're doing in this situation, yeah. but it's a, that is a very dicey situation, very dangerous for for both sides, as we were called sides. in yesterday. I don't know if you heard his. I don't know if you heard yesterday's whole conversation, but he called in, no. citing a couple of examples, and there have probably been several or more, <laughs> in which citizens have shot at cops and some taste, cases hit the cops with the guns, you know, shooting, and then yeah. they realize that they are cops, and then they give up the gun and like uh, and say, "Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know you were cops." 
because they just assumed that they were home invaders. And it is right. some some people say it is a form of home invasion. Is it justified or not? If it's a, so, uh, as Medora said, that it, in the cases of trap houses, meaning the drug houses, I guess, and that's what right. trap houses are, right? Or uh, terrorist cells, you can do that. You should you should do that. But in a, all other cases, he doesn't want that at all. Um, I don't know. There Maybe there are other cases in which they should have them. You want to ban them even for that? Uh, I don't know about for terrorism. That yeah, that's a totally different thing that has to be taken very seriously. So yeah, and you have to take I seriously what you define that. as terrorism too, because people are calling yeah. whites and Christians terrorists. Well, who, who's calling whites and Christians terrorists? Who's doing that? The DOJ. Wait, when did they do that? They've been they've been uh, calling us extremists. And the, um, the Tea Party was labeled as terrorists by, uh, politicians, Democrat politicians. So... I think they were probably, well, I think... You I can call it an exaggeration, about. but yeah. that's, that's what, that's what they're aiming at, is outlawing normal American citizens and calling us terrorists. They're doing that to the veterans, too. They come up with these groups... Hey, what's the normal... What's a normal American? Normal American is like you or, a normal American is like you or me or a veteran who loves the country, who happens to have his Second Amendment. He's armed, but he's a lawful citizen. He doesn't do anything wrong, but right. he loves the country. And if you love your country, you are called an extremist nowadays. So with yeah, so, I don't know and about so that they, one. and you know how. Some Proud Boys have gone out to rallies and fought with Antifa, and they call them terrorists as a result of that because that's considered political violence. When in reality, many of the times the Proud Boys are just defending themselves, or maybe they're ill-advised for going out there, but that's not terrorism. They tried to call the, the January 6th riot uh, a terror, an insurrection, but it was not an yeah, insurrection. It was, what it was a look. You calling it an insurrection? Yeah, that's what it was, man. No, it, it wasn't. Was like, are you, you are it? you trolling me? No, no, no. I'm not trolling. I watched the <laughs> videos. You saw them. They ran in there and they were like pushing cops and everything. That's not an insurrection. When you push cops, up. that's not an insurrection, man. That's a riot. I mean, isn't it an insurrection when you run in a a, a government building? No. Where no, it's you not make laws and nope. That's not they, an insurrection. They were trying to take over, and there were people in the crowd screaming they wanted people's heads on pikes and stuff. It's not, that's, an, it's not that's an insurrection. It's not a riot. <laughs> that's a riot. It is a riot. And so the people an screaming they want heads on pikes, that's clearly an exaggeration. That's clearly an exaggeration. Because nobody, like entered, nobody entered the building with armed with guns. People say stuff like that all the time. It's political. Political gets hot. Hot language. I can't believe that you fell for that line. Wait, so what's an insurrection? An insurrection is when you go in armed and actually like shoot, shoot people. Organized and armed and try to actually take out the government. There was nobody actually trying to take out the government. Those were people who were trying to confront the people who were supposed to represent them. Do you think it was right that they got arrested and charged, though? In most cases, no. Because most of those really? people, all they did was walk into the building. You think people should be arrested for just for walking into the building? Uh, if they knew they weren't supposed to be there, yeah, they should be arrested. Uh, you, don't, you can't prove that they knew that they weren't supposed to be there. The doors were um, open. The doors were open. No, yes. I, well, I saw, I did, I did see a video where they just walked in. See? I did see those people. Yeah, but so I there's a whole lot of people where who... there was a cop trying to close the door on them, and they were just pushing. Yeah, that those cop, guys smashing them up. Everything. Yeah, those guys, they were wrong because they were getting too heated. But that's a riot. That's not an insurrection. No cop was killed by the protesters. No, no person was killed, no person died, except for Trump supporters. 
wait, some wait, Trump. Oh, you mean the late the lady who tried to break into that uh that room and she got shot. Yeah, she jumped in. She jumped through a broken window. I don't know if she broke that window. I doubt it. She jumped through a broken window and she got shot, uh, seemingly blindsided by a, a cop who might consider to be a coward. Hmm. Are you black? Or are you Hispanic or white? Just out of curiosity. I'm black. <laughs> How come you're? Yeah. I'm surprised at you. Okay. So anyway. But back to why the, are you surprised at me? <laughs> how long you've been listening to my show long? Um, I listened, I, so I called in last year, yeah, and I listened on and off for about a year, yeah. Nice man, you mm-hmm. so you do you largely agree or disagree with me on stuff? Oh man, I feel like last year I agreed with you more. I don't know if I changed or you changed, I don't know, <laughs> all right, but um. I agree on when you talk about like the crime, yeah, and uh, like we're coddling criminals and uh, you know black people who have like a criminal mentality that we're we're supporting that instead of trying to change those people's minds to get them to see life differently. I agree with that one hundred percent. Yeah. Um, as far as like your opinions about the like the coronavirus and stuff, I don't, I don't feel the same way. And I guess we disagree on this, but, um, but yeah. You, you did, you, did you say you don't agree about the coronavirus stuff? No, I don't agree about that. You think that it's, you think that the, my complaint about the virus is that, uh, the, the powers that be and the, and the women are too scared. And so they're overprotective, and they do stuff that actually harms more than helps. The shutdowns, the uh, mask mandates, the um, the vax requirements, vax mess, the vax hype. They're doing it, they're jumping the gun, and they're doing it ahead of time in a way that you can't trust these people. You, just, you, you think that they're, you think that they're fine or what? Uh, well, what I think, I mean, I think obviously it was a serious thing. We didn't know when when the whole thing first started, we didn't know how dangerous it was. Right. So we had to take precautions. Um, I think as we found out more, like that most people are, are, are not going to die from it immediately. Um, then I think at that point we should change the way that we look at it. So obviously, which uh, was pretty I early support. on. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> um, yeah, so I support I support the fact that like okay, we started to see like if you're if you're younger and you don't have health problems, you're probably okay. It's probably not that bad for you. Yeah. So those people, like I understand those people not getting vaccinated. I understand. I understand all that. Right. My only thing about the way that it has been handled is, I think if we actually would have quarantined like actually quarantine in America, not like go at the house for like two days, but we really just, we did, we were in the house for, for like more than two days. Have. But I think if we re- like, if we really, what do you mean by really actually like quarantine? Really, like, like if they were like, Hey, nobody go outside except for with your relatives and your, your close family or whatever for like two weeks. I think the spread of this thing would have been killed. And it but they did gone. that. They tried to do that. They, did, they. I don't think you're right, man. I could be wrong. So what happened? They tried to do that, and this thing spread anyways. See, I don't think we really did that though. Like, like, okay, so I'm in Texas. That we never had that here. You know, our governor, he, he wasn't. And Texas that. is has not suffered disproportionately compared to. Uh, California or any other state whether they shut down or they didn't the states have all been pretty much the same did California did California actually shut down yeah we weren't even able to go to restaurants period not even outdoors for a time you couldn't even do a you couldn't even eat on the patio (laughs) <laughs> they tried to make us wear masks outdoors oh, all by ourselves. They were arresting people who were 
out by themselves surfing, paddleboarding. One guy paddleboarding all by himself out on the off the beach shore, yeah. and he was arrested. That's how insane these people are about the virus restrictions. Yeah, that sounds pretty extreme. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's my thing, you know. I just I don't believe that we should fall into hysteria. Right. That's my only thing. Yep. So I do think it's serious, and people should take it seriously. I agree. You should wear a mask when you're in public if you're going to be close to someone Depending else. Depending on how close you are, I guess, yeah. I, I yeah, do hear that that a mask, like, helps a little. I don't some people don't. Like some people vaccine, say it doesn't help at all. I think that vaccine mandate or anything like that. Like all these New mandates York are stupid. Forcing everybody to get it. That's, right. That's not good. Yeah. That's that's evil, actually. Like it's it's, it's horrible. Right. Anyway, man. Uh, interesting, interesting call, Chris. Let's talk again. Uh-huh. Let's talk again another time if you have time. Give me another call someday. Someday. Yeah, you, you take care. Um, you know, keep speaking your truth, and I'm definitely a fan. <laughs> All right, take care. <laughs> Bye. Bye. I don't like that term, my truth. I don't like the fact that blacks have gotten in, into that, but I didn't want to drag the phone call on too long with him. Let me try back uh, Tony in California, though. Tony, what's up, man? Good morning, Hank. How the heck are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm doing just fine, sir. Very good, very good. Yeah, I was just calling um, about this situation in, uh, I think it's St. Paul, Minnesota, that the young gentleman that was sleeping in, in the apartment and the police unlocked the door and came in yelling, 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 and then they shot the boy. Uh-huh. And he had a legal firearm. He's not a thug. We don't he know don't that. Have a police, he don't have a police record. Okay, and according a, to you, clean, I don't know if it's true or not. Clean, he's a clean individual, clean. human being, paying his taxes. And I don't know he, about and that. He was a registered, a registered firearm owner. I don't know where if that's true. The, it, where, that is true. Where no, I don't know. We is. can't trust you because why, you you lie why, all the time. Why is it? No, I see, there you go. No, I, I don't want anyway. to warn you or Jesse or, 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 that, or that thug on, on Fox News. It's thug. So... <laughs> Go ahead. So, so the thing is, so the thing is, where is the NRA? Why aren't the white folks with their gun owners across America out here marching for justice for this young man? Because marches not? are stupid, Tony. That's why. It's, Have it's you not? not did you hear my not, Tony? Did you hear my? Yeah. Uh, did you hear my show yesterday? No, sir. I, I, I was busy uh, running my business yesterday. So. Okay. Well. I'll have you know that a bunch of callers called in disagreeing with me because I spoke in favor of no-knock warrants because I don't trust you guys. And, uh... You don't trust who guys? You people. Who's the you people? We are human beings. Who, who are you speaking on? Can you be more specific? Yeah, you dumb, evil suckers who want to pretend that cops are the problem when blacks are a bigger problem. Black crime yeah, is a bigger what, problem. What about the white folks that kill? What about the white folks that are killing cops? They're not a problem? Well, I will, I will admit that cops in some cases uh, uh, are following the orders of corrupt politicians, and some cops themselves are, are kind of corrupt, too. They've become anti-Christian and anti-white and anti-man. So there is, is some... What is, what? So, that is, Wait, so that, is a, that is a bit of a problem, but that's like kind of attacking the, the strong arm of the government rather than the evil government itself. So you gotta, oh, oh, you got to okay. attack everything. So yeah, we okay. we're against evil wherever it rears its ugly head, including out of well, you. Evil, evil but I'll tell I'll evil. have you know, Tony, that a whole bunch of yeah. callers, white callers, gun own, gun supporting Second Amendment pro Second Amendment supporters were not in favor of no knock uh, warrants on the whole. So you called in think, asking where they that, are. They're everywhere. Yeah. They're everywhere. Well, you know what? That, that's a good thing because I don't think no knock warrants are. Should be legal in this country. How about how thing, about Tony? How about for uh, for drug trap houses, as they call them, I, which I gather to be druggy houses. Well, to me, that's that's an entrapment. If you want, you got to have a warrant. You got to have proper. They have a warrant. <laughs> even, even even okay, if they got a warrant, fine. But no knock warrant, that's not good. And no, how about for good. terrorist <laughs> cells? What about terrorist cells? Like 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 uh, January sixth. 
No, that wasn't terrorism. That was domestic terrorism. No, it wasn't. Why wasn't it? It was a riot. Actually, no, it was, was a mostly, a it was that, a mostly was peaceful, a, it was a mostly peaceful it, protest. Mostly peaceful? A tiny bit How of which. Most of the people where it cost six million dollars to clean the daggone capital. That's because they elevate costs, because they're lame. And they elevated costs? Yeah. Like they had feces, urine, you, all over the daggone capital. That was, Come on, that, uh, uh, Hank. That wasn't, Trump supporters don't do they that broke, type of stuff. They broke the doors. 140 police officers blah, were blah, 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 where, blah. Where is the blue line? Where is the blue line? Blah, 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 blah. When I hear you condemn, blah, 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 when I hear you condemn on, Black man. Lives Matter, I'll take you seriously. Come on, oh, man, now you want to go to Black Lives Black Lives Matter was nowhere in that picture. Yes, it was, was much the, worse. The, and, the, and the, 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 the Georgia, Florida cop, the, <laughs> Tony, the Georgia, Florida riots, they cost billions of dollars around the country, and it was an attack on the people. Not just some building that no, the that feds. Was on Donald Trump that we got. Hold on, that the feds. They feds stay paid anyway. The federal government, these government employees, they still have their livelihoods, but the private citizens, they don't have their livelihoods anymore. In many cases, they're hurting, and the and DC is still raking in the dough. But think about it: the regular towns that were destroyed by Black Lives Matter, and the and the crime that's gone. Out as a result of the supporting Black Lives Matter, that's hurt businesses. The government's still pay, getting paid. These government employees and so-called representatives still getting paid. But a lot of people, their businesses are torn apart. Their communities are no longer safe to do business in. People don't want to go out. People are scared of the, of the mess. But Tony doesn't care about that. He only cares about hating whites. Isn't that right, Tony? You only care about hating whites. Can you, I don't hate no one, sir. I have I a, I have a response actors. for you about the NRA. What about the NRA? Asmador with the super chat on Odyssey. O-D-Y-S-E-E okay. dot com slash what, 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 what do he have to hush. say? What did the, hush. What did the European hush. have to say? O-D-Y-S-E-E dot com slash at the Hague Report. He's interrupting me. Asmador states, the NRA hasn't done anything for anyone in years. They didn't say a word about Kyle, Jack Bauer, John Wick, John Wayne, Rittenhouse. Good point. Good point. What does Tony think, asks Asmador with a super chat, about Joe Rogan watching Planet of the Apes in his neighborhood? <laughs> Tony. Yeah. Did you hear what I said about the NRA? Well, they donated to his son. The NRA donated to Kyle Rittenhouse's fund? Yes. Yes, they did. I don't know if that's true. You're not an honest witness. So, uh, okay. no, no one is so we, shall, we shall assume no. that you are lying, and then we can look it up for no, ourselves at no our man, own time. No man Asmador, on this earth is honest, Asmador, brother. Asmador. I mean, Asmador says, Tony. I'm calling him Asmador. Sorry, Asmador. Uh, what does Tony think about Joe Rogan watching Planet of the Apes in your neighborhood? That's his business. Okay. All right. Cool. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> That's his business. All right. Hey, have a good day. You too. <laughs> As we go with another super chat, an insurrection. This is more to the prior caller from Texas. Is armed resistance to the power of the state? Literally no one did that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they're calling Canadian freedom improvers terrorists and insurrectionists now. Yeah. Not a good situation. Some more Super Chats, guys, over there on Odyssey, I mean, uh, Streamlabs, streamlabs.com slash The Hake Report. Adric, A-E-D-R-I-C, I'm apologizing if I'm mispronouncing it. Hake, what do you think about the Canadian police arresting people providing fuel to the convoy? You know what? I've only heard hearsay about that. Uh, I keep on mentioning Asmodor, who is on top of this stuff. He said that, that the police, some of, some of the time, much of the time, not our friends, they are arresting people who are providing fuel to the convoy, where the convoy are protesting in places that's very cold up there in Canada. Meanwhile, in a, down here in SoCal, we're having, like, warning, record heat, not record heat, but dangerous heat surges, heat wave. Can you believe it? It's going to be, like, 86 degrees over here in in uh, in a L.A. area, I heard today. 
86 degrees in February. February is one of the colder months of the year, supposedly. Dead of winter. Wow. Early spring. Uh, I'm not for Canadian pre- police arresting people who were providing fuel to the convoy. Uh, that's a matter of, one, survival, but two, it's supporting a mostly peaceful protest. And the protest is against the, the evil shutdowns. The evil shutdowns that were never necessary ever in the first place. And so, yeah, the cops are being used by the evil people. And some of the cops are all too eager and willing to comply with that evil. Your girlfriend uh, states with the super chat, Beard back better! Oh no, beer back redder! <laughs> kind of sounds like the Asian version of build back better. Beard back redder. <laughs> Sorry, Asians. Uh, beard back redder. Yes, my beard is back and it's redder than ever. I don't know if it's redder than ever, but yeah. I have my beard. It's, it's growing in. It's growing in. Your girlfriend with another super chat. I watched your mouthy infidel debate from several weeks back. The biggest problem with the socialist debates is that you often discuss socialism in practice while socialism idealists like Mouthy talk about it in theory. This does not allow them to have an honest debate. Yeah, so true. So true. Ridiculous. Not good. Patton said after World War II, we fought the wrong enemy. That's what I was going to mention. Good morning, Hake. Nice shirt, man, says Dan East. Yes. Lines are full, by the way, guys. I am wearing a t-shirt that states, Tom like a mug with Jesse Lee Peterson. Tom like a mug. And this is, uh, like, vintage gray or something like that. But you can find yours by going to rebuildingtheman.com slash stores, and you will find the Jesse Lee Peterson spread shirt link. There, if you scroll down through the various t-shirt selections. Rebuildingtheman.com slash stores. This is not a Hake Report t-shirt. It is a Jesse Lee Peterson t-shirt. I'm on his network. Uh, Guys, the lines are full. We are at the top of the hour. Maybe I should have saved some of those super chats to read during this music. (laughs) Maybe I'll just read the chat and, I don't know, who wants to talk to me maybe during the... uh, this noise. Okay, so this is Holly Drift from the 2004 album on Parasomnic Records, Waiting for the Tiller. And the track is entitled Lakeshore Sky Q. I guess you can even show it right now, me in the lower corner, if you want. But it's going to be an empty chair for a couple of minutes. But then I'll come back and I'll read the chats and talk with you. But it's going to be some nice atmospheric, ambient, noisy, sample of old stuff. I hope you enjoy it. Lakeshore Sky, U- Lakeshore Sky Q by Holly Drift. I'll be right back. Enjoy nine minutes of beauty. <laughs>
top of the steel television tower at 2 o'clock in the morning when it started to rain. Scouting network. midnight, the tower lights flashed off and on. My signal that the station was off the air for the night, and I could proceed up the antenna. What are you torturing us with, Hake? Asks Uncle Ted, 88, and many other people. Subliminal messages in his quote unquote music robot vaccination. Are these thoughts in Hake's head? <laughs> Isn't it kind of peaceful, though? Is that a law and edger? Nine minutes of this mess? I'm out! says Nugget Man. A little pay do e What the heck is this? A real toe-tapper. Thank God I'm not listening to this at night, says Seesaw. This has got to be the worst I've ever heard. I'm being hypnotized, says Tim Scott. <laughs> Should I get to calls because it's gonna be a while. But well, probably another five, six minutes, huh? Five minutes. Hey, what is this noise? Made in Canada. Enough said. <laughs> Big bump. What the? You're lucky we're friends. <laughs> yeah. Now I hear crickets and frogs. Major Tom to ground control. Well, guys, hope you're enjoying this beautiful music. Oh. While we enjoy, let me get to another musician. Luca! <laughs> in Indiana. Luca. Hey, hey, how you doing? Doing fine. How are you? We're listening to Holly Drift right now. I was doing I was doing good until all that noise. <laughs> <laughs> can you guys hear nah, press one if you can hear Luca. You might have to shout. Yeah, can you hear me over all this noise? I think we can. All right. So Lord Bibby 42 brought to my attention this new movie that's on um, Showtime. Have you heard of it? What movie? It's called Everything Gonna Be All White. Like white people. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's like totally just pushing this whole false narrative that blacks are so oppressed and whites are so evil and it's just... It's wild that something like Showtime is even playing something like this. If only everything gonna be all white. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Crank it, says Arctic Turk. Crank it down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I like the frog. The frog sounds are nice. Yeah, I agree, man. You don't play this stuff. Do you have any? Did you have any musician friends who played stuff like this? 
Hmm. Uh, no, I, I guess not. I mean, there's like the DJ type who just, yeah, trying to sit there and jam all day and like do background noises right. and music and stuff, but I didn't think people like that actually had music careers and made money off of it. But <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how much Holly Drift, how much money Matthias Anderson made. He got into this uh, when he was depressed, actually, and his therapist told tell. him, his therapist told him, you should get into making some art. And so he did. His therapist said, you should share your depression with everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> but look, special thanks. I'm looking at the liner notes on the CD. Thanks to God, Jeff and Debbie. See, he's a Christian. It's Christian nice. noise. Well, that's a positive. It, the mastering was done in Seattle, where everybody's depressed and listens yeah, to it. exactly. <laughs> where it rains all the time. Kind of rude to be playing this when white people call in, says Brandon Ember. <laughs> is this, <laughs> would this be considered white music, or is it more... I don't know, I think of whites and Japanese, and because of Merzbo and Burning Star Corps and others, Asians and whites seems to play this type of music a lot. I know a lot of people from yesterday's chat said that song sounded straight from Satan. This one's a little less satanic sounding. Yeah. <laughs> you know, At least um, there's not yeah. like people suffering sounds in the background. <laughs> oh, come on. There was no like screams or torture noises. <laughs> uh, sounded like it. <laughs> Maybe it was the voices in my head were screaming. Yeah. <laughs> Marissa, Marissa, Marissa. Hey, I'm getting dizzy. Please stop. <laughs> <laughs> I got a shout out, uh, King Drop. He's yeah. Amazing. He might call in today, he said. Cool. Yeah. Eating like a king. Nice. Have you ever heard of Hemi Sync music? Hemi Sync? Yeah, our binaural beat. No, I have not. It's kind of like that. It's like, you know, frog sounds or like whale sounds. They're supposed to heal our brains and like balance our left and right brain and all that. It's, it's supposed to be real good for you. Like wow. 432 hertz. Oh, okay. Because back in the day, music was tuned to 432, like Mozart and Jimi Hendrix used 432 hertz. Uh -huh. But over the years, the evil ones took music up to 444 which is slightly higher pitched and it irritates humans. Yeah. So most of the music we listen to is like subconsciously irritating our brains. Yeah. But uh, 432, you know, if you listen to Jimi Hendrix, you will notice the difference. It will heal your, your heart and mind. And <laughs> wow. <laughs> Play yeah. some Avenged Sevenfold, says Ashley. I never got it. I don't even know if I've knowingly heard them. Well, um, interesting. Well, thank you, Luca. Yeah. Thanks for the tip on that anti-white yeah, movie from Showtime. Yeah, I, I can't believe that. That is They're sounds evil. Putting propaganda out left and right. People need to just turn off their TVs at this point. Yeah. Well, thank you. Keep up the great work. Okay. Thank you, Luca. Have a, have a good one. All right. Bye. <laughs> Uh, Azador says, the audio be making me taste colors and see sounds. Whoa. <laughs> Turn the ASMR off, says Shaggy Boy. Um, man. Okay, so. I have talked about this before I get back to calls, guys. Bobby in Texas, I'm coming to you next. Hang tight. And other callers. Hold on. Um, I told you about yesterday. I kind of had to rush through it. Fathers versus the evil judges. You know, I talked about Canada earlier and mothers in Canada Vax unvaccinated New Brunswick dad Loses custody of his at-risk child a New Brunswick father according to CBC which is a which is a Canadian public so-called news agency meaning government funded New Brunswick father refusing to be vaccinated against the China virus lost his right to see his immunocompromised child and his two other children in person. Justice Nathalie Godbout of Court of Queen's Branch writes in her decision she was ruling with a heavy heart 
I told you this yesterday, if it sounds familiar, that the health risk to the 10-year-old child made the decision necessary. She debunks the research, quote-unquote, that the father did himself, that, said, that he says led him to question the safety and efficacy of the Pfizer BioNTech vax, which has not had uh, long-term studies because it hasn't been out long-term, right? His own anecdotal research on such a highly specialized topic carries little to no weight in the overall analysis when measured against the sound medical advice of our public health officials, God Bout writes. Isn't this sound medical advice saying that kids generally don't really catch this thing or spread it or suffer severely from it when they catch it? Right? The parents separated in 2019, but she doesn't admit that. Female judge up in Canada, New Brunswick. This is not the Quebec one. I'll, t- I'll cover the Quebec one again. The uh, China virus scamdemic and re- uh, the refusal of the father and his new spouse, okay, so he remarried, ill-advised, to be vaccinated, which is fine to not, to refuse to be vaccinated, especially if you're uh, a healthy person, poses a serious risk to the, ch- to the children. No, it doesn't. That's a lie, this evil judge wrote. Especially the middle child, okay, this one gets into that iffy territory. And this is where the communists like to thrive, in the iffy territory. The middle child gets specialized care for non-cancerous tumors in her blood vessels, which I mentioned yesterday. Their mother asked for the court to change the custody agreement, which they agreed to share custody a couple years ago, ending the father's in-person access. She applied to the court last year, and the hearing took place January 24th. As the parents who are caring for the child 50% of the time, in close quarters, unmasked and unvaxxed, they are well positioned to transmit the virus to the child should they contract it. This despite their best efforts, so ruled, so ruled this female judge, I guess. It's no contest. The current science in the face of the highly contagious virus far outweighs uh, the father. They don't men- name the father. They call him Mr. F. His layman, layman wait and see approach. So the ruling of this so-called experts and these experts as if they're so, so, uh, as if they're gods, you know, ridiculous. 26 page court ruling. New order allows the father a generous visiting rights via Zoom. Children should only be with the father then, not with the mother at all. Anyway, he refused to consent to the children being vaccinated while waiting for the hearing. He didn't want his children vaxxed either. Because, you know, I've heard, and I don't know if it's true, but I heard that the children are not particularly at risk from the virus, right? They became, quote-unquote, eligible for the emergency thing. I don't know what Canada does, but in America they called it emergency. As if it's an emergency for children to get, quote-unquote, vaccinated against this thing. God about ruled the mother could get that done without his agreement, and the children have now been vaxxed against the father's wishes. Ridiculous, huh? Three children have already received their first dose of doses of the vaccines seen since the ruling on Monday. She was ecstatic in some regards, said the lawyer, whose name is Grant Ogilvie who represents the mother, he's all, but this isn't a case where she wants to take the children away from their father. Yeah, right, lying lawyer. This is what's best for the children, period. She's acknowledged that this is going to have an impact on the children, but she said, I have to do what's best for them. Typical mama pretending that she's doing what's best for the children. What a lie. This lawyer liar said he won a similar order in another case, but the decision by God about is the first ruling of its kind in the province of New Brunswick, I guess. New Brunswick, that's a province of Canada? I don't know my geography. You Canadians. (laughs) Lawyer for the father could not be reached. Uh, There was another lawyer who said the ruling is a welcome development because the China virus has complicated custody agreements in all kinds of ways. It's not a welcome development. Agreements that involve one parent dropping off a child at the school and the other picking them up have been disrupted by at-home virtual s- schooling, for example. What, the, ch- the parents hate each other that much they can't even see each other? <laughs> In other cases, the children have contracted the China virus while at home of one parent just before returning the, to the home of another parent. 
What a mess, huh? Evil. This is one reason that God hates divorce. Shameful. But look at this. It's getting abused, and the worst people are getting reaping the so-called benefits against the best wishes of the, of the uh, children and the best wishes of the father. We are developing, we're definitely seeing a lot of issues I've never seen in 29 years of practice. Thankfully, we have judges guiding us on these things. This evil lawyer liar, Sheila Cameron said. Another lawyer, Natasha Bosse, said some separated parents, unwilling to be cooperative, are even using the China virus as a weapon. I mentioned that, right, in brief yesterday, to deny other parent access. It's already a diff- it's an already difficult issue, and now it's on a whole other level. Resolving such cases can take weeks or months. By the time we get to our already very busy courts, it does take time, and it takes a toll on the kids and parents. God bouts this evil female judge. Decision could offer a ray of hope for other parents in similar situations. And there's this female named Shelby McClellan. Let me play this clip for you. Clip 12. Um, hopefully the volume is okay, guys, on this. This woman is a mother, Shelby McClellan, who worries that her three-year-old daughter will catch the China virus when she visits her unvaccinated dad's home. Listen to this report, this video interview of her. It's just her talking. Outdoors. And she has, like, this dark eye shadow, and she's very pale, and she says, and she has these separated teeth, and she says that she has Crohn's disease. And she's been asking the government, typical woman, asking the government for help, the province, in her case. But she's been told her only option is to ask the court to change the custody agreement for her three-year-old daughter, because she doesn't, and the... She's pretending that it's the best interest of the daughter, but she's just scared of the virus. She's scared that he'll pass the virus to the daughter, and the daughter will give the virus to her. But the daughter's three. She'll just be with the dad only. (laughs) Am I right? Anyway, what a mess, huh? And I don't know if she was ever married, but here's this woman complaining about her daughter's father. Listen to this. Hopefully it works. I have a three-year-old daughter. Um... And we have a custody agreement between her father and I. And I also have Crohn's and colitis severely. And I've been told by my doctors that I was not to be associated with anyone who is not vaccinated. And therefore that uh, my daughter, sorry, my daughter should not go to her uh, her father's. And... um, and because of that, uh, if I don't send her, I can get charged with contempt. That's my situation. And if I do send her, I'm at a risk of my Crohn's and colitis, uh, the treatment failing. Because if I were to get Crohn's, I would get sick. Actually, in May, uh, they, despite having doctor's letters, they hauled me into court, into a public courtroom where I was vulnerable and charged me with contempt for keeping her home under doctor's orders. Oh, he told me flat out in a text, he said, I'm not getting vaccinated. He said, I refuse to get vaccinated. He said, and he said, you're gonna have to deal with it basically. I felt yep. angry because he should be, he should be willing to get the vaccine because he should be wanting to protect his daughter. If not me, he should be wanting to protect her because she's only three years old. She cannot get the vaccine. She's she not eligible it. and I think that any parent should put their their kids' needs ahead of their own. That's what I did. Yeah, right, woman. You did not put your daughter's needs ahead of your so-called your own. And and uh him not getting the vax is not going to put her daughter at risk. What a mess though. These do- these doctors scaring this scared woman And then she's, like, trying to control the father with it. And the corrupt... (laughs) Um, You guys are, like, making fun of her teeth, and it's making me chuckle. And the corrupt courts are not even as corrupt as the doctors in these cases. What a mess. Ridiculous. 
Last month, I told you about another unvaccinated father who said online he spoke against the vax requirements, right? So he he did that on social media, and then the mother, her his ex girlfriend or wife, whatever, the baby's mother, ch- child's mother, twelve year old child, his mother, said, "Oh, he wants more. He wants more time with his children." So he appealed to the court. What are the courts doing? Even me- messing with this stuff. He appealed to the court, and then she's all, no, he shouldn't get any. I told you about that. He temporarily, supposedly, lost the right to see his child because the judge ruled it would not be in the child's best interests because he's unvaccinated. Ridiculous. That was in Quebec. French-speaking connect Quebec. And Quebec is where they're trying to charge, fine, the people who are unvaccinated. They're going to impose a tax on residents who are not, quote-unquote, vaccinated. Shameful, huh? It's ridiculous. Anyway, let me get to um, Bobby in Texas. He wants to talk about the China virus measures in Texas. What's up, Bobby? How are you doing? Doing well, Mr. Hake. How are you doing, buddy? Doing well as well. Thank you. Yeah, uh, real quickly on that last story about the guy in Canada who lost the right to see his, his daughter. Yeah. It's like, I, I, I can only imagine they probably cut his child support where they don't have to pay that anymore either, I'm sure. I can only imagine. <laughs> nice sarcasm. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> ridiculous. They're like, well, you can still pay, you just can't see her. Yeah. What a Sounds scam. About, sounds about right. Well, they said, but, oh, uh, you yeah. have generous privileges to see your child via Zoom, meaning they have to... FaceTime or what a mess. Yeah, so my ex can sit there and monitor my call and tell me when I've had enough time with her. <laughs> that that sounds fair. Yeah. Um, so that what was the caller's name earlier from Texas? Was it Chris? Uh I think so. He was saying that Texas didn't do anything for the lockdown. Like they shut us down for like they did the you remember the two weeks to flatten the curve. That was Right. That was nationwide. That yep. was that was nationwide. Everybody was closed. My business was closed for 33 days because I was deemed non-essential. So, like, we were not only, like, the, we did the 14, but we uh, also did, you know, another additional, what, 17 more days to, right. to flatten the curve. And then, yeah, yeah, I believe it was in either May or early June that Abbott repealed the mass mandates for the city. For, for the state. Yeah. And then there were, uh, he, he developed, he, he went on like restaurants and things like gave them uh, cause everything was closed. You couldn't even go to a restaurant and eat for, you know, 33 days or so. So they started doing like 25% capacity and then like 55, 50% and then up to 75% and then, which is ridiculous. They restored to, that's right. That's, yeah, was, businesses can't afford to do, to work like that. It's, it's shameful. Anyway. And then they, they force them to spend money on, like, plexiglass dividers. <laughs> I know. Because everybody knows that COVID can do nothing against plexiglass. It's like the, it's almost as good as the vaccine. It's, it's kind of dirtier with the, with the plexiglass. Because isn't pl- plastic kind of like a Petri dish? Yeah, and then you got kids rubbing on it, touching it. Yeah. Standing up in the seat behind them, playing with it. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's just stupid. It's pointless. Yep. Same thing with the masks. Yeah, they, People mess with their masks and touch them. It has limited value. Anyway. Well, I don't, I don't want to be too hard on the guy. I mean, he seemed like he was, like, maybe just living under a rock for that period of time. Like, <laughs> but he seemed like he had the right, you know, the, he was open to, right. to yeah. seeing the truth to some degree. But, I mean, Texas took it as serious as anybody. Right. Yeah, our governor saw the writing on the wall that it was retarded and that, you know, there's no point in shutting down America to... You know, just for a virus that kills less than 1% of the people it infects. And those people, if you're at risk of dying from COVID, you should take it under your own advisement to stay away from other people to, you know, take whatever precautions you need to take, you know, to avoid getting sick. Right. But healthy people really, you know, I mean, reason to, you know, be afraid of COVID, to be afraid of dying if you're, you know, if you're just a normal person. Yeah, I agree. But I thought that I just wanted to let him know 
you know, that you know, Texas wasn't like we were just some crazy state that's out there doing shenanigans. Like, oh, we're the COVID's not real. I know. Go do your normal life. Like, it was shut down the same as everywhere else in the world. We just moved away from it sooner. Which it should not than, have been, I don't think. Yeah, they should have probably never. I mean, maybe 14 days. I mean, it was pretty new and pretty, you know, I remember hearing about it before it was even, like, talked about, like, as a serious thing. I would see it on the news, like, first people transferred it in China, and then, it like, somebody caught it in, like, Kentucky. You know, I was kind of following it, but I wasn't sure how it was going to be like it was. Right. Yeah. And then also in places like California and places, like, all through COVID, they were doing, you know, while everybody else is locked down, they're having BLM riots. Like, they're having, you know, all these protests all over the place where people are going unmasked or... Maybe or even, even masks, masks you know, but that touching. doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, they're still touching things, touching other people, being close to people, like germ spread. So, yeah. I mean, it's not like they were taking all these precautions to keep it from spreading. Yeah, terrible. And uh, let that guy know he needs to get out and vote for, for Alan West next weekend. Like, Oh, is that when the election is? Wow. Yeah, yeah it'll be February 14th. We'll start early voting. The uh, March first will be the the primary results and the results for your local state officials, local and state officials. Okay. But the governor will be in like I want to say it's in November the eighth. So the primary though is coming up. So get out there and vote for for Mr. Alan West. Okay. Cool. Yeah, Alan West is the uh, he's from originally from Florida. I think he. No, I think he was actually born in Georgia. He grew up in the same neighborhood as Martin Luther King okay. Jr. Yeah. And then he went to school in Tennessee, but he was, yes, he was a representative, or I believe, in yeah. uh, Florida. Yep. And, and then, then they, he moved they to Texas. Redistricted, yeah, they redistricted, redistricted his district, and he was forced, kind of forced out of office. Yeah, what a shame. So we were, we were lucky enough to to get Alan West in Texas. So maybe he'll be the Black History Month's first black <laughs> governor of Texas. That would be wonderful. I I would be surprised, but let's wait and see. And we should definitely push for him because I, I like him and trust him much more than I do this Greg Abbott guy who is just, yeah, you can say, push him around. like They claim Abbott's leading the polls, but... I mean, I'll vote for Abbott if if West doesn't win the primary, if he's unable to. Don't to say that. Enough. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, you, have, you can't vote for Beto. I, I'm I know, not but just don't Beto don't come don't play power. the don't play the if game because that in, emboldens the people to it, that emboldens the corrupt to put Abbott in place. We should be like, we're never yeah. going to vote for a rhino. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then just see I'll ride Alan West in on the ballot if I have to in <laughs> November. Yeah. But yeah, hopefully what hopefully he, everything works out and we get him at least as a primary winner coming up. I'd love that. I would love that. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited. I'm hoping. I've got a lot, of, a lot of good positions opening up in my area, so I'm hoping, I'm hoping we have a nice turnout for our election this year. Yeah. All right, Bobby. And also, what's your name? The one in uh, Wisconsin, the one everybody hates. Uh, Liz Cheney? Is that Liz, Liz Cheney? Liz Cheney, there you go. Yeah, so let's hope she gets primaried out this, this semester as well. So I would love that. The, she's on the ropes. And but, she's losing her, uh, yeah, she's losing that in her polls. Oh, really? So let's hope, yeah. She has a lot more money than the person that she's uh, running against because she's been in office for so long. But she's losing by a lot so far. Uh, a super chat from Asmodor over on Odyssey. Dan Huffings. Uh, yeah, no. Or Don Huffings? Yeah. Don Huffings. Huffings is a man to vote for, not Alan West. That's what he says. No, no, no. That dude's a freak show, man. What do you mean by not freak at show? All. I don't, I, he's like just, he's a weirdo. I don't think he's, he looks like just, uh, he doesn't look right to me. <laughs> and I mean, I like what he talks about. I got a lot of his mailing stuff in the mail, and he's, you know, running against critical race theory and same uh -huh. things. He's running against the same stuff Alan West is running for. He's just a weirdo. He looks like a he looks like a Democrat to me in sheep's clothing. He says he's a. I'm looking at his website. 
I'm Don Huffings, husband of over 34 years, father of five, grandfather of four, never took a penny of government money while serving in the Texas Senate. Oh, he was a former uh, state senator, I guess. Yeah. Exposed uh-huh. the largest government corruption scandal in Texas history. 100% pro-life, 100% pro-gun. If he has a record of being a a senator, look into his record. I understand what you're saying about uh, about uh, his look, but look into I don't know. Look into his that. wife. Also, looks like a she looks like a liberal to me. I don't know. <laughs> I just don't trust him. I, I I do think he runs on the right stuff, but I feel like he's running on the same but how about you know, his, legs as how about Alan his West. record as a as a state senator? Because you can go by by more than just the look of him. But I understand the yeah, concern about the look yeah. of him. But yeah. Huffins for Texas governor says <laughs> Brandon M. It's interesting. Uh, it's Cheney's from Wyoming, not Wisconsin. I knew that didn't sound quite right. Yeah, there you go, Wyoming. I knew it was a W state. Yeah. Yeah, so he's endorsed been, by Ron. He's endorsed by Ron Paul, and Rand Paul, <laughs> and uh, some others. I don't know. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. I, I, this is the first I've ever heard of that guy. So I will look into him a little bit closer, but I'm pretty, I'm pretty sold on Alan West. Like I, I think that they're running basically on the same ideals and the same idea of like what they want to see from Texas. But I think also you're going to see a stronger uh, border presence from Allen West than you're going to see from Huffins, I think. And I think the border is probably the most important issue that we come across right now in Texas. That and well, the election. The border situation, integrity. that's a fe- the, the, the feds stop the states from enforcing the border <laughs> situation is part of the problem because that's supposedly Texas- the federal government's purview to enforce the border situation, which... Even uh, its own. even under pressure, Greg Abbott has had to pretend like he's paid attention to the border, bringing in the National yeah. Guard and stuff. But I think However, that's pretense. Like, Texas is the only is the only state in the United States that has its own Bill of Rights, and it's got its own. You know, we can basically we can sue the government for not protecting the border. That was part of us joining the United States was that they would protect the border yeah. and keep the border safe, and they've neglected that that job of, yeah. of protecting that border and they've just been flying in immigrants all over the country from there yeah. and arizona so i think that's probably our biggest you know the biggest threat to texas right now and the biggest threat to future elections bleat, that, that border bleat boy over there on uh youtube says hey huffings I don't know how to pronounce his name. Refused to bend the knee when the mob tried to cancel one of his staffer for, quote, being a scary Nazi. So, uh, we'll ride on to him for that. I, I appreciate when people don't cave for sure. I'll, I'll definitely look more into his, his, his ideas and I will hear his, uh, his record. I don't know a whole lot about him. Okay. I've just been getting his stuff in the mail and, what he's running on is, you know, is the right stuff. Don't get me wrong. Right. All right. I just have a hard time. I understand, Bobby. Right, thanks. Take care, man. Yeah, thanks, buddy. All right. Have a good one. You too. Oh, Mike in uh, Las Vegas. Mike, are you there? Hey, hey, how's it going? It's going pretty well. Hey, man, I was, uh, I was watching your video from Monday, that, that little Joe Rogan uh, compilation. Oh, yeah. Where are you saying the N-word so much? That was hilarious to me. It was to me, too. (laughs) He's like, oh, it sounded so bad. But to me, it was funny. At at the end, when he was like, but you won't say it. Look at you. (laughs) And then he said it. Dude, I barely laughed. That was so funny. (laughs) Are you on a speakerphone or a Bluetooth or something? You're coming in kind of rough, kind of tinny. No, No, I'm just out here working. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna park here. Um, park. Yeah, I thought it was hilarious, and and it's it's interesting to me how, you know, <laughs> I've been I've been called all kinds of white derogatory, but I don't even see it that way. Like, even my white friends are like, "Oh, what's up, honky?" And, and this and that. That stuff never bothered me or anybody I know. I know. I just think it's interesting how, how sensitive how sensitive certain people are. It's crazy to me. Yeah. No, it's shameful. 
People are it, it ridiculous. Also, and they're trained to they're trained to be like that and they don't realize that that's rooted in hatred towards whites and a false identity with all black people. And that's why they uh that's why they think, "Oh, I'm offended because this person whom I never met called somebody else a bad name. Give me a break." And Joe Rogan didn't even do that. <laughs> He was just well, quoting. It was, it was taken out of context. And yeah. I like, I like what Jesse was saying about, you know, you can't own words. Like, when, when you say that the best part was uh, if, if, if it bothered him that much, they'd be the first people to stop saying it. Right. And that's true. And and it's like they're, they're basically taking rights away from one people and giving it to another. It's like you have the right to do this. You can protest. You can you can slang racial epithets and, and all this stuff, but if you're white, you better not do it. Right. It's, it's absurd. Yep. It's absurd. And and you know, I was listening while I was on hold, you know, I caught the end of that uh the guy that that that, that they took his kid away from and, and they're gonna start taxing people that don't have a vaccine. Right. That's crazy. Can can we start taxing fat people? I know. You know I'm tired of how much my my health insurance costs and that's that's a big part of it. Yeah. Are we gonna start taxing smokers? And people with AIDS and all those, everybody else or, or just the politically, you know, convenient. Or the homeless who are spreading diseases like typhoid and, and typhus and stuff like that. Yeah, or or prostitutes who spread uh, STD. I yeah. mean, we, we, could, we could tax everybody for something. But that's what, they, that's what they'll eventually do. They'll just use these people and then toss them to the side. They, the people in power are just selectively enforcing... Uh, their fake rules against their political enemies and anybody who's who uh, is popular enough to be a threat. And since Joe Rogan has like 11 million on average listeners, my competitor, he has about 11 million listens listeners per show on average. That's a competitor, and so they don't like, I know, I like stepping I like outside the, the line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and. Uh... I mean, I imagine it's okay to mention her favorite Fox host. Her what? Is it okay to mention uh, a Fox host? Yeah, yeah. bring up on the show all the time? Yeah, so Tucker, you know, I was watching uh, some of his originals and stuff. Uh-huh. And, uh, man, you know, the, the way they dive into it, <laughs> you know, I, I remember we talked, and, and I was talking about how I wish Tucker would talk about more stuff, but... You know, for what he is doing, I'm, I'm totally grateful. Yeah. Like, you know, he, you can tell he put some work into it, and, uh, yeah, man, it's some some of these shows that have been coming out, man, it's, it's, it's insane. Yeah. But anyways, I won't, I won't take up too much of your time. I got to get back to work. I'm out here in the field. So. Well, thank you, Mike. I appreciate it. Take care. Hey, man, keep up the good work, man. God bless. All right. You as well. Uh... Hang tight, callers. I'm getting to uh, Mark in Santa Monica next. Um, but first, I gotta get some super chats in here, guys. Pizza be with you, Lord Good Hair, stage Lin Yen Chin, over there on uh, streamlabs.com slash the hate report. He also says, giant robot lives matter. That's why we need more white baby engineers and less of us black baby dementianeers. Dementia is too near our hearts as we emulate Mama Satan, the intellectual. And he also states, never explain yourself to a woman, also known as intellectual. Interesting statement. Especially the ones lost in the thinking, quote-unquote thinking, of their formal abuse, also known as education. Once they reached a conclusion about you, and you see it is not true, don't try to explain. Just run. They can't see reality. Billy Bob with the super chat on streamlabs.com slash the hate report. And he states, thanks for stopping that noise. And he's referring to Holly Drift, Lakeshore Sky Cue, from Waiting for the Tiller. The 2004 album on Parasomnic Records. Well, thank you. Um, and another super chat from Asmodor over there on Odyssey, O D Y S E E dot com slash at the Hake Report. He states that that uh, guy, that scary Nazi, 
scary Nazi was Jake Lloyd, who is not a Nazi. He is formerly associated with the Groypers. The left tried to cancel Don Huffings, I guess Jake Lloyd. Jake Lloyd worked for Don Huffings, I guess. He was formerly associated with the Groypers, who are Americans. They're not Nazis. They're Catholics. Mostly Catholics, I think. M- many of them white. Some of them not. Uh, and they are for America first. America first. So, the we need to start um, going after putting... We need to start putting people back in the closet for being evil, not for being for what's right. You know what I mean? Nowadays, the Christians have to be, and the pro-America people have to be in the closet. Many of you guys, you don't even use your real names. And quite understandable. They're forcing the Christians into the closet when, in reality, uh, it should be the other way around. We should be putting evil in hiding. But no, evil's out there, shameless. So wrong. Uh, thank you for the info, all of you guys. Oh, um, Mark from uh, Santa Monica dropped. Let me get to Jeremiah in Louisiana. Oh, Jeremiah dropped. Darn. I didn't hang up on those guys. I did not hang up on those guys. Let me get to... Rick in Hampton, Virginia. Rick, how are you doing? Things, my brother. Can you hear me? I can hear you and your boomer beep, boop, boop, beep. <laughs> oh. Rick, your phone is kind of messed up. Let me let me put you on hold and get you ready. Let me get to Merle in Michigan. Merle, <laughs> thanks for calling. Hello, how are you doing? Mr. Hey. hey, how you doing, brother? Doing well. How are you? Okay, you know, it's, it's really ironic. The forbidden N-word uh, used to be used against black. Now <laughs> it's being used against white. Yeah, so true. Yeah. It's a big weapon against, against white people, yeah. the N-word. It's, uh, I remember... Look at Joe Rogan. I, I, I remember one time years back, um, my uh, co-worker, associate... Asked a, a salient question. What's worse, to be called a racist if you're white, or to be called the N-word if you're black? Well, it's clearly worse to be called a racist if you're white, because the world, yeah. the, the blind brainwashed world will te- right. uh, it, it, kill it, you. It is true that racism, racist, anti-Semite, all that, are just anti-white racial slurs. Yep. They never... Use it against and it's anyone more, but white people. And it's more than just a slur. It's a smear word to besmirch your character and rob right. you of a job. Oh, to get you canceled. Yeah. Get canceled. canceled. Is, yeah. And canceled means you can't have uh, your a job, job a in many account, cases. A lot of stuff. You, yeah. you can't be on social media. You can't even have a website in many cases. Some of the most canceled people. And they're going w- worse and worse and worse. First they came for Daily And you know, it, it, that word only has whatever power we give it. Suppose we just ignore it and, and don't give it any power. They can't do anything. It's like, yeah, that's your word, not mine. There is truth to but, that. You don't have to cave or pander. You may still suffer in the world in, on a physical level, but you need not fret or let it get to you. Um, uh, Nemo says that the Groypers, he, he, he says... In the chat, Groypers blame others for their problems and are full of anger. They're evil. Well, that's, I don't believe that that's true of many of the Groypers. Maybe some, in some cases, that may be true, but a lot of them, you can't get them down. You, you've never seen Donald Trump down, even with the attacks on him. His spirit has never been down. And so it is. Oh, I think he has to retaliate to every remark that he doesn't like. He's like a retaliation, a though, is that. not. You can't see his spirit yeah. being unsettled. That's what I'm talking about. Whether you agree or disagree <laughs> oh, he, with he, me, my point remains about yeah, whether you agree yeah, or disagree a, about Trump. The point remains: the, you're, you can't be unsettled by this evil. You have to. Uh, yeah. The world. You have to, you have to expect calm. it. You have to expect it. Yeah. So there was this, I saw this, uh, this woman, she was up on a stage or, you know, up on a truck, 
uh, talking uh, on a bullhorn or a microphone or something and, and asking, do we have any white supremacists out there? She's trying to make a point that, like, I don't see any. There are none or whatever. Right. And one guy came up who was also on the stage and said, yeah, me. I'm a white supremacist. Who gives a shit? Oh, sorry. Said the wrong word there. Sorry, kids, cares, adults. You know? Right. It's like he's giving it no power. You know? Yeah. I mean, somebody can believe that there's better than other people. Uh, plenty of people do. And it's and that's your right to think that way. Yes. And it's. And, 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 you know, the POCs uh, feel these, like they're uh, better than the racists. What's the difference? I, and they treat the racists ADL, worse than the racists treat the POCs and the libs. I see all these ADL Jonathan Greenblatt types yeah. talking about how they want to stop, stop, stamp out hate. This, they're, they're, they're interviewing this woman to be the new anti Semitism czar. I mean, they're 2% of the population, and, and that's the biggest unsolved problem we've got in America. <laughs> we have to have special staffs of people, and they got lobbies and everything. Really? Yeah, not good. Really? How much power do they do they need? You know, and, and it's like, my whole point is, is like, uh, we got to stamp out hate of us. You know, I don't have to like you, and you're never going to make me like you. And they don't, and, and they don't make me stop saying it because you'll, you'll put me out of a job or something. And they don't but like us gonna, either. I, I, they hate us too. Don't tell me. I don't, I don't necessarily dislike them, but don't tell me who I'm going to like or not. Right. That's my bit. Yeah. You know? Fair enough. Yeah, man. Appreciate it, Merle. Good to hear from you. Peace out. All right. Yeah, take care. Bye. bye. Let me get back to Rick. I think he may be ready now. Rick in Hampton, Virginia. What's up? James, can you hear me real good now? Much better. Thank you. Sorry about that the first time. I probably was pressing the buttons and stuff on my phone, but um, I just wanted to comment, man. If you don't know that the Democratic Party or the Demon Rat are <laughs> wicked, I mean, I guess they, I guess people are going to wait till Jesus Christ going to come down here and, and say that they're wicked. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is ridiculous. Now, why? I mean, there's, there's much you can, you know, you can put down the infrastructure, either um, job training for people or something, but you're going to get people uh, um a, 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 a tool to use some of the most addictive drugs, and if you want to tear a, a community up, use crack cocaine. It'll tear it completely down. It'll tear it down faster than bulldozers. Yeah. That's so true, I, man. You know, I mean, I'm like, I said, what on earth? I thought it was a joke. I heard Jesse talk about it yesterday. I like, I haven't heard that yet. But when I heard it, I said, are you kidding me? <laughs> I mean, what do you think about it? I think it's evil. Absolutely. I agree with you totally. Totally agree with you. I mean, I'm like, I don't know, man. It's just, it's, it's like, I'm just hoping, man, we got to throw these people out. But you know what I mean? Running for office, just was saying, oh, you, uh, the other guy was um saying, um, but just was saying, won't you run for office? I think a lot of people don't run, like, well, you know, like conservatives. They don't tend to run because they don't think they have a chance of winning. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think or they should. I think they aim too. A lot of times, these people aim too high. There's these normal guys who are just no experience or anything, and they're running to try to unseat uh, multiple, multiple, and they're all full of ego, uh, trying to unseat like Maxine Waters or Nancy Pelosi. And these people are not trustworthy people. They're full of ego themselves. Even if they were to succeed, I wouldn't trust them to fight and win. So it's some people need to to focus on like the local politics and go up, go for the school board, go for the um, go for the Department of Water and Power because these people are the evil people have infiltrated everywhere. You know what I mean? You uh, James, you're right. But the reason why I think they aim for the big cheese for because um, when you go to federal, you make more money. Yeah. And you get more money. And, you know, so uh, like if you go went on the school board, you like to say, man, that's peanuts, man. They want the lifestyle. They want to um, ride around. How do you own style? You know, ride around and go around in D.C., you know, looking old and poor. You know what I'm saying? Right. But here's the thing. If AOC can come out the bar, and we don't see it in Congress at the federal level. That's what everybody doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> but a lot, a lot of them, 
a lot of liberals, you know, they come out of, look at, um, what's that, um, Tlaib, um, Tlaib, uh, Rashida, uh, Rashida Tlaib? Yeah, she ain't got no experience. She don't want to start her own seat with no experience. Well, that's because they, she has the entire establishment kissing up to her and for her. The mainstream media was propping her up big time. And then the, I bet that she got major money from the, the radicals. It's interesting. The radicals get major support, the radical leftists, if you will, right. to use Trump's word for it. <laughs> That's James's favorite word, evil. <laughs> this is Gucci Flair. Uh, the radical leftists gets, get major money. Black Lives Matter, these, all these you know, evil people. They get major money. They get kissed up to by the, um, you know, Black Lives Matter was kissed up to by the commie capitalists. Google, Facebook, Twitter, uh, SoundCloud. SoundCloud may not be in that league, but all those people. YouTube. YouTube is Google. But the, the billionaires on the so-called right, they support rhinos. They don't support radical right-wingers or people who are based on truth and Christianity and not hating whites, that's, uh, they get, the billionaires support people as long as they support the LGBTIQ mess, so-called right-wingers. That's not right-wing, uh, billionaires, so we need, uh, I don't know, spiritual wisdom, and then we need to become millionaires ourselves, <laughs> some way. Absolutely, you know, and, and you know, because that's how, that's how the liberals do, James, you said a mouthful and you didn't choke, brother, they do it, they... <laughs> Use their money and stuff, and um, and like we sit up here and say, "Oh, crawling about be making these policies, but we won't run for nothing." And you know, it, it's a point because um, I even thought, you know, it was so funny, Jack, because it crossed my heart to run for something. You know, maybe school board. Because if I ran for school board, I would have it with um parents and send their kids to whatever they want to send them to, private school, non-private. You know, and um. And they have, and the private school will have more resources, you know. I mean, not from the government, because I know, like, Christian schools, they don't want nothing to do with the federal government, which I don't blame them, because then they have to be forced to teach the Christian kids about a crack fight. Yeah. So I can understand why they want the federal government involved, you know. But um, I would definitely push for vouchers to um, you know what? take their kids, whatever, you know. I understand the people who oppose, there are right, right-wingers who ex- oppose the school voucher thing. Because that's mm-hmm. gonna, just going to lead to more mixing of, of the races and forcing black ki- ba- bad black kids into white schools. They really mm-hmm. need to f- fix they really need to fix themselves because you're just Absolutely. redistributing Absolutely. The, the, you know, the misery. You know, it's, it's a thing about it. When it, I was talking to a friend of mine this morning, I said, um, you, I don't know if you heard about enforcement of Virginia. Um, a, a state senator was leading some blacks, tearing down, you know, um, golly, um, dang, um, Civil War um, statues and stuff. Yeah. And then this woman originally, she, uh, she was going to store for $6 million, something like that, a million or something. And then they set her out and paid her $300,000, and all the folks have about 10000 apiece. Whew. And I said, I hope, I hope that city be so broke they can't even pay attention. Not good. They re- they rewarding bad behavior. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it, Rick. It's good to hear from you. Always oh, good to hear from you, James. Keep up the good work, y'all. Love you guys. May God continue to fund y'all um, program and um, prosper on all parts of life, my brother. All right. Take care. Super chat from Lin Yen Chin states, giant robot, giant baby robot engineers working work tirelessly to craft a personality for me, a personality bearable enough so I may at least imagine not repelling every person of the opposite gender I happen to come across, I will download humor on my Neuralink. <laughs> I'm wondering if this is really Lin Yan Chin. <laughs> uh, thank you, Lin Yan Chin. And thank you, people. <laughs> Terrible. Uh, you know, it's, it's, um, Ridiculous. I saw this before I get back to uh, calls. I saw this little report from uh, Washington Examiner. It's kind of a rhino outlet, but they're talking about it was a drudge report shared it Spotify Airbnb and GoFundMe. I didn't even think of this Spotify came under fire 
for secretly removing over 100 episodes of Joe Rogan's podcast. I don't know if that's true. Maybe they did, but Joe Rogan also went in cahoots and removed, like, a bunch himself, right? I don't know. Airbnb last week banned Michelle Malkin. I covered that. Airbnb. These huge companies. Commie capitalists, I call them. Demon rats. <laughs> Got them. Uh, Michelle Malkin, who ta- spoke to the Groypers, spoke to uh, America First young people. She and her Jewish husband banned from Airbnb. Go fund me. Uh, they blocked contributions or took the contributions and then threatened to give them to liberals for the, uh, for the freedom convoy up in Canada. Pretending, oh, they're Nazis. Give me a break. And on and on and on it goes. And it seems to be ramped up right now. Ridiculous. Trump wants to get rid of, uh, he wants to cancel DirecTV because DirecTV has canceled, reportedly, One America News Network, which is a a relatively pro-Trump channel. One America, O-A-N-N, O-A-N. If AT&T Direct TV cancels OAN, I hope that everyone will boycott and cancel Direct TV. OAN is a very popular channel, far more popular than most would understand, being treated horribly by the radical left lunatics running the networks. Instead of being allowed to grow, their voice is being shuttered. Don't let it happen. Cancel Direct TV. If you feel infringed by what this communist movement is doing, cancel Direct TV. We do have to fight back. It's ridiculous. AT&T. Commie capitalists, enemies of America. And these are American companies. I know people who've worked for these companies. And now they're turning on the people. I remember when Home Depot was sponsoring gay pride parades 10, 15 years ago. Shameful. So evil. Eric in Selma, Alabama. What's up, man? You got two minutes. Go. Yes, sir. Shout out to Hate the Great when I heard your debate like you uh, did. It was like, I guess, over a week ago. And you said in the debate, and I quote, among blacks, racism is worse than murder. Hate, you dropped a bar in, man. That was a bar. (laughs) That was a bar I got to give you. That is so true, man. I be saying it to people. I'm like, hey, man, that just emotional crap is just, you know, it's all about your spirit and your heart. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's what it's about. I'll be telling people that, but they don't believe that. They still believe in the lies and the, oh, knee on the neck, but really it was on the shoulder. Oh, yeah, whatever. Yeah, I know. It's shameful how, how people just don't think clearly at, or objectively or dispassionately. We should be dispassionate. <laughs> Something I learned yes, from JLP, sir. be dispassionate. <laughs> Very nice. Yes, sir. Be dispassionate. Be compassionate, right? That's the word, right? Compassionate. Instead yeah, but don't, don't fall for the false version of compassion that the, that the commies, the women, take on. It's ridiculous. Yeah, you, yeah you're right. I just want to, <laughs> you know, shout you out on that. And Thank shout you, out man. to my people in the chat. Shout out Cisal, the beautiful Mexican Cisabuele. Uh Shout out Skip, even though he's a snake, but I still love you. Nice. Uh, shout out to... Uh, you know, Luca and, you know, my people, Michelle, 67, everybody. Sounds good, man. And this is King Drop, right? Yes, sir. It, it is he. It is he that talked this with thee. My, my ancestors <laughs> were not slaves. <laughs> they were uh, kings that sold their own people, which is a mess. But behold, the noble king is here. And nice. I'm all about freedom. I'm all about putting God first and loving thy neighbor as thyself. I'm trying to get better with loving thy neighbor as thyself, because there's a lot of people I don't like, but it is what it <laughs> is. I don't hate them. I and, don't hate them, but I disagree with them. But, and it's you know, Eric... I don't, li- I don't like them. And it's Eric, yeah. E-R-I-C-K. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Nice. King Eric Drop. My father's name is Eric. All right. Thank you, man. Yes, it's good to hear from you. Yes, sir. Take care, man. Have a great day, y'all. Everybody. Nice. You as well, man. All right, brother. All right. Bye. Asmodor states, do an image search for Democrats are the real racists and and, uh, time how long it takes you to cringe. (laughs) Uh, I was thinking blacks are the real racists, but it doesn't even exist. Let's go, guys. This has been the Hake Report. Catch you 
later today on Bond Archive Sunday service premiere. It is available on Church with Jesse Lee Peterson audio podcast already, as well as Bond Rebuilding the Man Bit Shoot and Rumble. And also on Substack now. Cool, huh? All right, thanks, guys. Take care.